to this teaching today on grace. We want to have an overview of grace and it's based on the course, course 107 in the Global School of Ministry curriculum and the Masterclass curriculum, Grace. And the course is all in a book titled Grace. The ebook is available free of charge on the website www.kingdombusclub.com. And this video teaching is the age in the series we have taught throughout last week. And the whole idea is to give you a holistic understanding of grace so that you can press in and grow in grace and come to the place where you can be all that the Father planned you to be. And you, as long as your hearts are open and as long as you are willing to adjust to the truth and allow the truth to do what it wants to do in you, I want to assure you that grace will take you to where your natural strength, your natural ability, whatever things you could do on earth, whatever natural uh, 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 capacities or, or, or assets you have, nothing can compare with the grace of Elohim. The same grace that brought you into the kingdom is the grace the Lord wants to process you through your pilgrimage on earth. The same grace through which he wants to manifest his grace in you. And it's the same grace that will secure you a place in the world to come so that you will make the rapture and be part of that in innumerable company of saints who are going to rule and reign with Yeshua in the earth. Tree. Grace is holistic. Grace is everything. Those who try to, you know, speak ill of grace because some people are twisting grace to mean something else. Listen to me. I don't want you to call anybody a hyper-grace preacher. Somebody is either a teacher of true grace or is a teacher of false grace. False grace is the one that makes people to become so irresponsible that they literally excuse their sins with grace. And they think that by so doing, they're on the right path. Well, it's a choice. If you want to forsake grace or ignore grace or you want to misuse grace or squander grace, that's your personal decision. But true grace is not to be squandered. True grace is not to be joked with. True grace is not to be trifled with. True grace is from the Father about the most excellent great gift you can ever receive in the earth realm as the grace of Elohim. When you receive his grace and walk in his grace, life ceases to be a struggle. You can literally stretch your hand in the river of grace and be carried by the current of grace. You can literally fold your, I mean, stretch out your hand and soar on the wings of grace. I pray that today this lesson will add value to you. And then this week, from Monday to Friday, as you come alongside with us, we will explore this team together in greater detail. With I want to give you a little overview and then we go into it today. Remember that what we are studying, Grace, is one of the smaller uh, 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 books in the Global School of Music Curriculum, back to back. It's just 147 pages. And we're studying over a period of two full weeks. Five working days and two Thursdays and one Sunday in between so that we have a total of 13 sessions on this video series. And if you will open your heart, those of you, if you have not checked out what we have done so far from Monday till today, we've done six videos, I mean about seven, I think, you know, teaching seven lessons, but they're about, today is supposed to be the eighth lesson. I think it's in all of six, I mean seven videos. Eight lessons in seven videos. I want to encourage you to get lessons one to six, you know, and then two were in one, and one was given on Thursday, and we're coming here as the eighth lesson. Get them all. Then from tomorrow till Sunday, I mean, sorry, till Friday, rather, we have more lessons. And if you're in the Global School of Mystery and the Master Class, we are combining our teaching so that we don't have so many things in the in a week, different subjects, people can be confused. We want to focus each course we bring, we focus on it, those in the master class learn, those in the school of ministry learn, and we grow together throughout the period <clears throat> there's will be like lockdowns. So I want to encourage you, open your heart and learn. May Father will bless you. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to receive grace from you 
even now to teach your people grace. Without you, we can do nothing. Let your grace go forth by your spirit, breathing upon this uh, teaching, breathing upon your servant, and use your servant as a vessel of conveying grace to the hearers. Let them be ministered to by grace, and let it profit them. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, by way of overview, it's very important for, you to, for us to tell you that this is one of the shorter courses, 147 back to back. The medium courses are from about 250 to about uh, 300 and something pages. Then there's the mega courses. Some of them are 600 and some of them are 800 and something pages, you know, depending on which. We have the Constitution of the Kingdom, I think it's about 600 and something pages. Then we have completing the unfinished reformation, which had to be broken down into three e-books. Brothers and sisters, let me just give you an overview of this course. And I will encourage you to go to the website www.kingdombooksclub.com and enter the bookshelf. Look for the bookshelf, enter there and look at, uh, if you go there, you see grace. We start with a foreword. We we'll start with also an explanation of why we use the Hebraic names of the Most High, like Yahweh, like Elohim. The reason is not because we are part of any movement. It's just that, you know, as the Lord began to deal with us, He began to show us great riches when we, for instance, if I call Yeshua by the name the Father called Him while He was on earth, it's okay to call Him by your native name, Christos, Yeshua Christo some languages. It's okay to call him by English or whatever. But the truth is this. He had a name the Father gave him while he was on earth. It was the name. He had Emmanuel, God with us. He had also Yeshua, which means Yahweh, salvation. The grace in Yahweh that is put in him with which he came. And then by the grace of the Lord, that name in Hebrew, Yeshua, when the New Testament was being written, it was written in Greek. And so the Greeks couldn't have a, a name for Yeshua, so they had to interpret it to Greek. And that was Yoshus, I-O-E-S-U-S, Yoshus. And then Greek was the language of learning in those days. And then when English overtook Greek, they now translated from Yoshus to the English Jesus. That is fine. Call him Jesus, praise the Lord. Call him Yoshus, praise the Lord. It's just like the, the title was Yeshua HaMashiach. Mashiach meaning the Messiah. The Messiah. Okay, the Greeks, how, what did they know the Messiah for? The Messiah means the anointed one and the only Greek word that could answer, the, uh, that could describe the Messiah is Christos. So Yeshua, Christos, Jesus, the anointed one, Christos. And then when the English took over, in the same way, Jesus Christ, Jesus, the anointed one. And so we need to understand these things and not take them for granted. That's the reality. So if you call him Jesus Christ, you are all doing well. You call him Yeshua Christos, that's fine. Whatever in your native tongue, fine. But according to Revelation given to us, we want to call him. By that name, the Father gave him by his identity because there are so many Jesus across the world today. There are many Jesuses all over the place. And so, brothers and sisters, feel okay whatever way you call him as long as you are referring to the God-made man, the God who was incarnated in a human body, in a Jewish body. People deny the Jewishness and they claim he's uh, from Africa, he's this and that and that. All those div diversions will not be necessary if we have that pinpoint identity that we're known all through the Old and New Covenant. Then chapter 1 of the book talks about the prologue from uh, uh, verse 12 or page 12 all the way to page 20 is, is chapter 1, the prologue, the general introduction. Then chapter 2 is grace of Elohim both an Old Testament and a New Testament scriptural survey. We brought our references, a hundred and something references to the, to the concept and name grace in the Old Covenant. And we proved that grace is not just in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, there was grace. Noah found grace in the sight of Elohim, as Genesis 6, 8 says. We told you, Moses 
walk with Yeshua, they walk with Elohim rather by grace. Psalm 107, uh, Psalm 103, verse 7 tells us that Elohim revealed his acts to Israel, that his ways to Moses. He walked with him by grace. Moses says, Show me your glory. If you are not going with us, if your presence doesn't go with us, I will not go in. Moses was not legalistic with Elohim. It's so interesting to know this. Abraham walked with Elohim, you know, by grace. He lived and walked with Elohim at least 430 years before the law was given. He walked by faith, walked in grace. And so grace is there in the new covenant as well as it's in the old covenant. And it's the entire concept we need to understand, the concept of favor with Elohim, unmerited favor. You didn't earn it. And yet, the Lord gives it to you. And in the New Covenant, it talks about grace as the root of our salvation. We are saved by grace through faith. He has paid the price. It's not our works. It's not by ticking boxes of what we have done, our righteousness. No, our righteousness is a filthy lag right before Elohim. And so, the New Testament survey brings out the applications of grace from the book of Matthew all the way to the book of Revelation, where grace is uh, spoken about, and it's important you know these things, it will help you. And one thing clear in the New Covenant, the references to grace, is that Paul, who the Lord made a wise master builder or master plan, they gave him the architectural plan of the New Covenant, Paul spoke about grace more than every other vessel combined. Paul, the revelations given to him were by grace. And everything about his life, his call, and his service, and his ministry, the awesomeness of his assignment was by grace. In fact, so much so that Paul was able to tell the Romans, in Romans chapter 1 verse 5, he talked about Yeshua, the Father, and, by, and the Father by whom we have received grace and apostleship. For obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, by him. He was sure. He received the apostleship. And I want to say this to you, brothers and sisters. One of the biggest problems in a modern day church is that a lot of people are doing things they don't have grace for. They are not called to and they don't have grace for because they are title conscious. So there was a time what was popular is pastor, pastor, and everybody wanted pastor. Everybody wanted to answer pastor. People wanted Titan offering, so they just grabbed Titan, pastor. Even those who were called to be apostles or evangelists or prophets, they wanted to hold pastorage. No grace for pastoring. Pastoring is not about preaching. Pastoring is not about preaching. Pastoring is much more the grace of shepherding, the grace of going to care for the flock, looking well, looking diligently to after the flock, looking to their well-being, making sure that everything is okay with them, that all that they receive from apostles and prophets and evangelists and uh, are channeled to life and life that grows. Pastoring, if you don't have the grace and you take the title of pastor, you probably are sentencing yourself to an early death because the weight of it will crush you. But if there were grace, you will enjoy it, you will not endure it. The same way some people, there was a time, evangelist, that was a popular name. And everybody see, I'm evangelist, so, so and so, because they are imitating people on TV, thinking that by that name, then they will open their mouth and miracles will begin to happen and healings. You know what? You were not called by grace. And you don't have the grace for the office. You win it yourself. You pray, you shout, you scream. When it doesn't happen, you begin to pray dangerous prayer. You begin to shout and scream and push people down because there's no anointing for people to be slain under. And so you need to push them and all that kind of thing. When you call to be an evangelist, the answer is no. There are people who are calling themselves apostles today and the apostleship has no fruit. No fruit whatsoever. Neither in the local assembly nor in the larger body, no fruit because the Father didn't call them. A denomination called them, laid hands on them. A denomination gave them a title or they gave themselves a title. The grace is not there. So they can't handle when the men, men, the men like Paul said, you know, that in the, after the manner of men, beasts 
attacked him at Ephesus. He had to contend with them. They cannot handle pressure. They can't handle satanic attack. They can't handle the things that come with the apostleship. They don't have the plumb line or the kingdom standard to apply to the work and they're just carrying the title and bumbling along. And they're not those who call themselves prophets. They're actually diviners. And they're not those who call themselves prophets. And they are not prophets. They just flow in the prophetic, meaning that the Lord can use them to bring forth a revelatory word that doesn't make them office of prophet. But they take it. They grab it. We are told no man take this glory unto himself. But he that is called of Elohim as was Aaron. And there are people who are calling themselves all kinds of titles. Do you know there are those who are called to be teachers? And if they focused on it, you know what? The Lord will have used their mind to it, but they grab pastor because it's popular. And nobody knows about teacher. So they are ashamed to be called by the identity. Brothers and sisters, it, the more we understand the truth of the Holy Scriptures, the more we stay in our grace. And whenever the grace is given to you, you have the Lord has used you to the point he wants. He can expand the grace. He can enlarge your coast. He can enlarge your platforms. He can give you the appropriate requisite supporting grace to move to the next level. Grace makes you patient. Grace makes you to endure. Grace makes you to wait on the Lord to open the new chapter of your life. You don't go grab it. You don't go because someone has done something, you grab it. Oh, you want to have your own. You see, today, religion has made grace of known effect in many fundamental ways. One of them is religion has made people to look at ministry as organization you own. They begin to think about the 501c if they're in the U.S. Or they think about the charity that they will own. And they are the visionary, overseer, pastor, everything. And it's all about the money. They are looking at the grant they will get. They're looking at the ties they will get. They're looking at the offerings they will get. And that is what is, you know, ruling them. Their mind is covered with thousand and one ideas. They are not walking in grace. They are walking in natural wisdom. They are making their permutations. What to do? How to do it? How I can structure and make money and get money and use it and claim that I want to do things, this or that or that. And it's actually what they want to do. Because they want to build. They want to get something. They want to get an asset. And they forget that Elohim, as First Peter chapter 5, verse 10 says, the Elohim of all grace. He is the ultimate of grace. And the Bible tells us that he sits on a throne of grace. What does he do from the throne of grace? He dispenses grace. The Bible says in Peter, 2 Peter 3, 18, he gives it more, no, but grow in grace. You know why he says grow in grace? Because he himself gives more grace. Because he's giving more grace, he wants us to grow in grace. Grow in grace to the point you don't go and grab something with your own hand. Grab something with your own mind. Grab something out of your own ambition. Allow the Lord to take you from one level to the other. Don't carry a title where you are not. Suppose you are called and the Lord has made you a minister in the marketplace. Why do you need to carry title pastor? Why do you need to carry title uh, uh, prophet? When you are to be a minister in the marketplace and you should be receiving the anointing that was given to the type of anointing that Joseph had, Daniel had, Esther had, the anointing for the marketplace and enlarge the kingdom, impact great number of people, be the salt and the light, and there perform the kingdom no duty, and then your pastor will tell you, no, 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 we want more pastors, we want more pastors, and they hurt you. That's what destroyed the revival that happened in Nigeria one time. After the Civil War in 1970, there were a lot of young people who went to school, they were in medical school, they were in architectural school, they were doing some of the serious courses, every course is serious, but I mean some of the ones that you spend six years in university, and then there are pastors who tell them, you mean Jesus is coming now, you want to stay six years in university? Some people abandoned their different courses of study to go and be teachers and do single honor. Three years or four years, they come out, they make them pastor. And then 30 years later, Yeshua has not come. 50 years later, Yeshua has not come. But what has happened? The church had cut itself in the nose. No doctors, no lawyers, no architects, no professionals. All they have is teachers. 
And then all these bad and wicked rulers who withhold salaries will come. And for six months, teachers will not be owed. So church is poor. Teachers are poor. People are just there because of a wrong understanding. You see, when we understand grace, like Paul said, by his grace, I am who I am. Grace will make us to have local assemblies where everybody is who the Father wants him to be. And that's why the local assembly is to be an organism, not an organization. If we understand that, nobody needs to convert that person's office or that person's office. You stay in the lane the Lord has given to you. And in that lane, you pour out all the grace in you. Others pour out so that by what every joint supplies as efficient, chapter 4, 16 says, the body makes increase of itself in love. So when we do the survey, you will understand. Then chapter 3, it talks about grace in context. The context in which grace wrapping up what is in the biblical survey and then chapter 4, it tells us that in page 44, Yeshua, Jesus, grace, and the kingdom. We see that is the embodiment of all grace. Yeshua is the embodiment of grace. And he paid the price at the cross of Calvary for the grace of the Father to be released to all. Then in chapter 5, look at two things of grace Yeshua modeled for all saints. Two things of grace he modeled for all saints. One of them is that he saw the will of the Father in all things. He saw, I can of my own self do nothing. Those who walk in grace, they learn not to use their mind to process spiritual things. Because the natural mind cannot comprehend the things of the Spirit. The natural mind will make you make computations. Computation. Computation of what you can do. Oh, there's that church building. And let me go. Apply. I'll get it. Is the Lord say you should go there? No question. You see, a lot of people are making the mistake because they are not looking at Yeshua. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is all. The Father put us him as a model. He didn't do anything, including choice of the 12 disciples. Nothing he did without first inquiring of the Father. And he didn't go to ask the Father to do what he wanted. But clothed his prayers upon the Father. He waited on the Father. He prayed until the Father answered him. And the second thing in model was that the grace of the Father in him caused him to focus intensely on the mission for which he came. He didn't deviate. He knew himself. He knew his identity. He didn't allow the world to divert him. Satan tried to. He didn't allow him. Peter tried to. He didn't allow him. He focused. His face was set like a flint onto the mission of the Father. And he was growing in grace in the sense that even though he's the epitome of grace, he was able to wait for 30 years. Man and brethren, can you imagine? On earth for 30 years, all that people knew him was the son of Joseph, the son of Mary, the carpenter, the brother of James and Joseph and Jude and the sisters. That's all he was known for. 30 years. We should have waited for 30 years for a three and a half year assignment. Can you consider that? Today, somebody is saved seven years. And he said, hey, look at my mates are now pastors. I'm not. Uh -huh. Your mate who is a pastor, do you know about the election that took him there? The election, the sovereign choice of the father that took him there. You know, brothers and sisters, the Bible wants us to get to a place where we don't know no man after the flesh. We don't assess people by their gender, their age, their title. We don't assess them by how big is their house or their car or whatever. We All we know of them is the grace in them. And when we know people by grace, you give way to people according to the grace in their area. And they, everybody stay in their lane. And that is the new covenant. The concept of the new covenant is an organism of people who have gone through what we call the T-tier process. Teach, train, equip, activate, release. And they are laboring together as the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. The fivefold is used by the Father to bring that forth. So when people don't understand that, like now we have, we're in lockdown, everybody's going on Facebook and they are saying the same ABC is what people are doing. They are inviting you to come into the organization, not because they have something to empower you. They want you to hear their beautiful sermon. They want you to uh, join the organization. That is not the word, the essence. The if 
It's not that we want to invite people, but the essence is not someone to join you. It is more of the essence is to empower people from one glory to the other. That is why before you can truly do an online ministry, the question is, what is your motive? Is it to increase church, the number of people? If it is that, we have all been most miserable. But the better purpose should be that the Father will put in our hand as leaders the resource or tool through which we can be able to impact more people with the same trade, teach, train, equip, activate, and release. And our goal is to empower people to be able to take the territory the Lord has assigned to them and to be able to fulfill the destiny the Lord has given to them. And that when it's handling and we have a pure heart, no agenda. You know, there's so much coverage. It's like church today is a festival of masquerades. People carry masquerade. Everybody, everybody. Oh, what, what we're told in Jeremiah that the heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? That's what is happening. Somebody will be walking with you. You don't know him from Adam. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what he's thinking. You don't know what he's plotting. You don't know what he's planning. Until one day, one little thing, the real self comes out. But um, brothers and sisters, that's okay for religion. In the kingdom, there's no space for that. In the kingdom, there's no space. That's why we need to be transparent. Be transparent. Transparent with your leaders. Transparent with brethren. People should stop being tears in the house of the Lord. At times, people don't stop being tears. But little by little, their lifestyle, their attitude, the, 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 the unregenerated nature, begins to make them to do the things Pastor Grace was you know, expositing about as tears and brothers and sisters, even though the Father says, don't root them out so that you don't destroy, listen to this, there's damnation and waiting tears. And these people who are in with you and they are strangers, they are not honest, they are not forthright, they are not frank, and they are not transparent, something is wrong with them. It is the starting point of drifting away. If somebody is with you, I don't know, they pretend, he just wonder, he will creep in, he wants recognition, he wants office, and yet what is motivating? The same spirit that made Judas Iscariot, that though he was around Yeshua, he was not really of Yeshua. Though he had opportunity, and that tells us something, grace can be squandered. Grace can be wasted. There was a young man called, you know, Demas. Demas had a mentor, Paul the Apostle. Demas had a man in his life who was really grace, Paul. But you know what? When he got to Thessalonica, in around Greek, Greek, Greece and Macedonia now, that city, it was a chief city in those days. Oh, he looked at the glory of Macedonia. He abandoned Paul. The glory of Macedonia swept him away. So a young man who could have had the testimony that Titus and Timothy had. You know what Paul said of Timothy in the book of Philippians? He said, listen, I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state as I would do. Oh, men and brethren, he had this testimony. It's a beautiful testimony. So Demas put his back to grace. And that was it. The wall swept him off. Judas Iscariot, squandered grace, missed it, ended up suicide. Brothers and sisters, do you know that the more you know about Elohim as a thrice holy one, whose eyes are purer than to behold iniquity, the more you know of him as the omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, omnibenevolent one, the more you stop playing games with grace. You don't squander grace. You don't go to, you know, you know, there are people who are, all they are thinking about is self, self, what to do, self. You know, as we're doing, we're saying, okay, because it's by grace, all the revelations we have, we release it. You know, some people, what they do, they're looking for the day, they're plotting the day. They go to one country, they go to one corner, bring to the books and use it to make money. Can you imagine? To use it to make, and put their name. Can you imagine such terrible things can happen? People who you give them, you think that they are, they, there's something life in them, 
and just what is inside is dead men bones and they have this kind of plot to use the a resource of grace to deny it of other people why not use your grace to help to expand the world let more people hear let more people understand let more people receive grace and why are you plotting to use it to go and make money and deny people access to that grace brothers and sisters the more we understand these things the more we become open then number six we see that chapter six grace makes us primary instruments of the great commission primary instruments because once we begin to understand the dynamics of grace we understand that grace is not given for our belly it's not given for our belly paul said in philippians that there are people whose god is their belly who mind earthly things the Lord has not given us grace for our own ambitions and our belly, our uh, to make money. Grace is given to us to be instruments of extending His grace, so that those who have not had the gospel shall hear; those who have had shall be taught to be become disciples; those who are disciples shall be trained to become ministers; those who are ministers shall be, you know, built up to become sons of Elohim. So, grace enables us to know which part are we having in it. Are you to pray? Then you exercise that grace to pray and prepare the ground, prepare the hearts of people, and take out all elemental forces, kingdoms of darkness, take them out so that they can be open for the gospel to move forward. It's your grace to give money. You give it joyfully, quietly. You give it without agenda. You give it simply. And we have seen a few people. Do you know that because the vast majority of people come to this commission, they don't give. They don't give. If it were not the grace of Elohim, this whole thing would have died out. It's as if Satan said, since I can't stop them from preaching, I've tried them. Look at Pastor Grace. Look at her. If you know what she's gone through in terms of physical challenge, that she can sit here to preach for one hour, it's all only Elohim. So Satan, knowing the heart the Lord has given to us that if we perish, let's perish, making sure that this gospel goes everywhere. You know what he did? To close up hearts of people, to just come to get, get trained, get ordained, to go and start their own ministries and make their money. They never remember where they were trained. They never remember Pastor Grace and I. They never remember we have children to feed and take care of. So it is from time to time. The Lord will usually raise a vessel who will say, okay, that thing, I'll take care of it. Like the TBM program. That kind of a thing. So what I've said to you, in so simple, uncomplicated way, this person did it with such fineness. They didn't even want anybody to know about it. And that's why we don't talk about it. You know what, brothers and sisters, I want to say this to you. If the Lord has given you grace to be a giver, do it with simplicity. Do it with joy. Don't make any bones out of it. Connect with whatever grace the Lord has brought you into and make sure that it doesn't stop with you alone. If you have skills, skills like there are some people who are in techies, they know how to use the internet. Why are you wasting it? Bring it along. Let's make sure this gospel is going everywhere. You know, Arabic, you can translate English to Arabic. Why are you sitting on it? Bring it. Let's translate it. There are 300 million Arabs, the children of Abraham, through the other woman, Hagar. You understand what I'm saying? We need to make sure that they get the gospel. Supposing you know about some of the Chinese languages, you know, please bring it along. Let's translate it into Chinese. 1.3 to 1.5 billion people, let's infuse them with that. Or you know by Hindi and other languages of India, Urdu, in Pakistan, bring that grace. Don't want to make money. Bring the grace. We bring the free resource. You take your grace. We translate it and push it out. We can create on our website, kingdombusclub.com. We can create Chinese section, French section, you know, Japanese section, and different languages. Hindi. You know Russian language, bring it along. What is it the Lord has given you special enablement to do? That grace, don't hoard it. Oh, you know, did I start my own ministry? If that is your attitude, you have really kicked your grace, the can down the road. Because grace is given in the place of service. He said, He giveth more grace. 
Elohim receives the proud, but gives more grace to the humble. The humble are those who serve with their grace. They make their grace available. You don't stay in a place there's a need for what you know you can do. You keep back. You hold back. No, you're not helping. Do you know that it's in exercise of that grace that you are truly being prepared for greater responsibility? Pastor Grace and I can tell you that the places we serve and the ministers we serve, we give all. We gave all. We gave all. I serve in a denominational church. Leadership from house fellowship right through to planting a church and leading the church until the Lord called and separated me for the assignment and Pastor Grace also from house church to coordinating, you know, youth and you know a language section and doing many things with the, in the ministry. We didn't earn a dime. As a matter of fact, all the years of serving the ministry, no income ever. No income. It's grace that the Lord supernaturally provides for us. Supernatural, at times unexpected, at times even at the last moment. But brethren, grace enables us to live the fullness of what we are called to be and to do. And we have not yet arrived. We are still growing. When you pour out, more grace is given to you. When you withhold, you, you cap your grace. And there are a lot of people capping the grace in them. They are not growing because they are not pouring out their lives. The Lord wants us to pour out our lives as a drink offering unto the Lord. And if we truly pour it out, then grace will be made available for us to do much more than we have done. That's why this work has been growing. You know, by his grace, because nothing is withheld. And I want to say this, is there something you can do? If it's intercession, Prophet Oloma needs you for the intercessory team and spiritual warfare team. Oh, is it evangelism? Pastor Moody and the team, they need you. Come on, go, let's go and take the nations for the Lord. What is the grace? You have grace to give for orphans, orphanages, you know, the widows and those on the front line. To your Minister Desi in the UK, teacher uh, Stephanie in the US, Minister Lindy Way in South Africa, uh, Minister Pat and Evangelist uh, Chewe in South Af in Zimbabwe. They need you for the work that needs to be done in those nations. They are pilots from there to all the nations of the earth. Whatever grace, you have grace if you are in any ministry. The grace you have may be what is needed to make the grace work. If you can teach the word, oh, teach up and the you know school of life team here, they need you. We need more teachers because very soon we are assigning people to teach at various levels to various places. And whatever you can do, as long as it is not the one by your ambition, but the one given to you. But no one can do anything except it's given to you from above. So grace makes us primary instruments of the Great Commission. When we bring our grace together, the Great Commission is expanded. When we bring our grace together, we're able to make more impact. We're able to go forth. If the Lord has given you resources, financial or material resources, don't hold it back. Right now, we need some, you know, special equipments for this work to make sure that this work gets to uttermost parts of the earth. Those equipment and by the number of them that completely will make everything easy and light and brothers and sisters whatever the lord has given you grace for you can design things you can do posters you can do flyers we need that grace you can do internet work we need that grace our grace makes us instruments of taking our place in the great commission then chapter seven is what we'll get into from tomorrow we'll do it over three sessions Chapter 7 is the grace known as God. The grace known as God breaks down grace into all the nine dimensions of grace. I, I don't want to open it up for you. Tomorrow, about 10.20 a.m. UK time, which is about 5.20 Eastern time and 4.20 Central time in America, and 11.20 South Africa, Nigeria, and Ireland, that time in the morning, we're going to go into the Grace Nonagon chapter 7. We took them one by one. We take three on a day. Tuesday, we take another three. Wednesday, we take another three. Then we go on to the epilogue. The epilogue talks about, you know, summing up the entire teaching. And brothers and sisters, 
when we can follow these things, by the time we finish, you would, nobody would tell you that truly the Lord has empowered you with a revelation that can cause you to walk in the fullness of who you are. You see, we came into the kingdom by grace, through faith. The Lord doesn't want us to ever look away. It is easy to gravitate to works and legalism. To gravitate into tick boxes, do this, don't do this, do this, do this, do that, 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 that. To the extent that we think it's by our ability to do those things and tick boxes we have done. The Lord wants us to stay in a place where every single thing, even the smallest, our consciousness is that it's by His grace. Our consciousness is that with Him, all things are possible. We love righteousness. We hate iniquity. We rest in Him. We allow Him by His Spirit to fill us and power us. We are vessels and we are full of Him. And He uses us to do what He wants to do. And that's why the Lord wants us to be people who walk by grace. If we walk by grace, we are going to be the fullness of what the Lord has called us to be. And I want to encourage you to check out the polite epistles. You know, Paul, in most of his salutations, where, like in 1 Corinthians 1, 3, grace be unto you, and peace from Elohim, our Father, and from the Lord Yeshua. Grace be unto you. Paul used that a lot. We are supposed to wish other people grace and shalom. Two things. Let it be a salutation as children of Elohim. Grace and peace be unto you. It's a beautiful thing. And Paul, remember in 1 Corinthians 3, 10, he says, According to the grace of Elohim, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I've laid the foundation, and another builder thereupon. I laid the foundation that the work of the Lord should be done by grace, not by our works, not by ambition, not by our struggle. It's by grace. Listen to this. When you need to plan and scheme to do things, I want you to check. It is possible grace is not there. And that does not use our mind. But by His grace, our mind can be renewed by the Holy Word. So that we have the mind of Yeshua. We are no longer thinking carnal thoughts, worldly thoughts that can take us away from the Lord. You know, David, for instance, great king, friend of Elohim. One day, Satan entered his mind. To do what? Number Israel. Why? He wanted to know how many foot soldiers, how many artillery, how many chariots, how many horsemen, how many people, da, 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 da. You know, he didn't know that that idea alone was canal. Satan entered him to number Israel, to look away from the grace of Elohim that was with him. That even when he was in the wilderness, the Lord brought all manner of people. People who couldn't pay their taxes. People who had all issues with the law. And that re re ragtag army, Elohim used them to keep give David great victory. He forgot that. He wanted to number. If today, even today, the tendency to number, the tendency to over canalize and overstructure our things is very real. That's why we have to be careful that in all we are doing, let the mind of Yeshua power us on. Let it be his own idea. Not every good idea is a God idea. There's a difference between good idea in the way we think and God idea as to his own. And that's why the Lord wants us to be people. Let's build. He says, let everybody take heed. Let every man take heed how he built it thereupon. The foundation of the church by grace has been laid by Paul the Apostle upon Yeshua Jesus. And they say we should be careful. How can you be towards the end of the age you are doing the work of the Lord and you reject the ministry of the fivefold? You are the one fold. Everything is you. You reject the ministry of the fivefold. You reject the ministry of deacons. You reject the ministry of exhorters. You reject the ministry of ministers. And it's just you. Huh? How can it be that we're in the old, we are towards the end of the New Testament, you are still running a theater paradigm of ministry where people come as into a building to meet a man or a woman and they are lifeless, they are like dormant laity watching a performance on the altar. Even in the last hour of the day, the last days of the gospel, when the Lord wants to quicken his church and bring the body alive. 
we who are leaders, our job is to allow him to release grace in us to make sure that the grace in people is activated so that they can function according to the grace in them. And brothers and sisters, these things can be done. And that is why it's so important that we come to that place of celebrating his grace in us. Like he said in First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, but by the grace of Elohim, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of Elohim which was with me. So all that he did, first missionary journey, second, third missionary journey, all that he did was not because of ambition, was not because of things he wanted to do, it was because the grace was propelling him. When grace propels, our job is to answer, yes, Lord, have your way. Yes, Lord, have your way. That is the language of people of grace. So when he leads you in a way that is illogical, yes, Lord. He leads you in a way that sounds logical, yes, Lord. But he will lead you in the ways that sound illogical more than the ways that sound logical. That's how grace operates. Because grace operates by Elohim's own mind, not our mind. So that's what we say, let this mind be in us, which was also in Yeshua. When we allow the world to renew our mind and the world to transform our hearts, we come to a place where we are not thinking for him to then ask him to rub us down. We are rather open before him. We wait on him. And he leads us. He guides us. Brothers and sisters, this course will literally blow you up. It will blow apart all the carnal things you picked up in Bible, college, and theological seminaries. Because when you begin to walk in grace, you walk in fullness of the divine purpose, and the divine purpose will take you from glory to glory. The divine purpose enables you to stop struggling. You are not swimming against the current, but you spread your hand in the wind and the waters of grace, and grace carries you. So when you are struggling and scheming and plotting, it may be a good thing for you to truly check this struggle. Is it emanating from trying to do what I wasn't called to do? Why do you need to make yourself the pastor of a ministry? When the grace given to you is to be the pastor in a ministry, and there's a difference between the pastor in a ministry and the pastor of a ministry, the difference is as clear as crystal. Do you know there are a lot of people why there's so much struggle? A lot of mortality of ministries, churches that were set up, 10 years they are gone, 5 years they are gone, 3 years they are gone, burnt out. What happened? People were operating in a ministry fivefold. The grace of the overseer covered them, and that grace enabled them to walk in their own grace. Maybe in that grace, whatever it is, they were doing it well. And again, we whisper to them, no, you could do more with your own self-titled your own ministry. All this title and offer will come to you. And they went, initially, as if they are wonderful. They even got a crowd. Two years later, it's packed up. All over the world, Americas, Africa, Asia, Europe, the same principle of churches started, but they didn't last the distance. They say, oh, money, this issue is money. Who told you? Money is the issue. Money is nothing when grace is at work. Brothers, listen. Money is not the issue when grace is at work. Grace will bring money, but money cannot bring grace. Grace will bring people who will collaborate with you. Money cannot bring people. You can advertise yourself, do your beautiful Photoshop face, put your, your face on the television, put your face on social media, put your face on posters and flyers and use it to draw people to you. They might come two, three, four times, but because you are not operating in grace, they leave. And many ministries are packed up. They think it's money. Oh, we couldn't pay our rent. <laughs> money cannot give you grace to lead a congregation. That's why I want to say this to you. One of the ways you know whether people are sincere is how are they flowing into fivefold setting. Because in fivefold setting, humility is required. To acknowledge the grace in people, humility is required for you to know the limit of your ability. 
Can you be a worker making money? Spending five, six days at work and then you want to run a church as a part-time enterprise and be the overseer? No. Your grace may be to be one of the ministers or one of the pastors in the place. So you go to your work and then in the evening, the little time you have, you put it to work of ministry. But so many people planting churches as if it's personal corporation. And that's why it's become a mess. A lot of people in Europe are put off by churchianity because of ABC syndrome, attendance, building cash. Grace knocks down ABC churchianity because grace enables everyone to grow in grace, to know which part of the body they are, and they are brought together. Apostle does his work or her work. Prophets do their work. Evangelists do their work. Pastors do their work. Teachers do their work. And by what every joy supplies, the body makes increase in self in love. And brothers and sisters are empowered to be who Elohim called them to be. And there's no struggle because the grace of Elohim is at work. And I want to encourage every one of us. Let's come to that place where we recognize that all this churchianity and tendency to want to open churches is not of the Father. If the Lord wants to use you to you know, lead a church, he will first let you to fulfill your ministry. And when you are fulfilled, the Lord himself will separate you onto something better than where you came out from. Not less. There's something better. And that will be something that will be clear, not just to you, but to the leader and to people who are working with you. They will know when you are walking by your flesh. They will know when you are walking by your spirit. And a wise leader will never have told you. You come to a leader, you want, oh, I want to be released. I want to start my own ministry. No wise leader will, reach, will told you. They say, praise the Lord. They will release you. But the truth is, what are you going to do? Less than what you were called out from? Then the Lord is not there. Because the part of it just is like a shining light that shines more and more onto the, uh, onto the, onto the day. And the Lord wants us to come to that place where we can receive grace, to walk in grace, so we can excel, we can soar on the wing of grace, and nobody can stop a man or woman who is walking in the fullness of grace. Grace makes us not to know any man after the flesh. We don't know you by your physical features. We don't know you by your gender. We don't know you by how much money. We don't know you by your title. We don't know you by your building. We don't know you by the name of your organization. What we want to know is what grace is at work in you. And when we bring grace together that way, you know what happens? Yeshua is manifested. For you say, where two or three are gathered together in my name means also by my grace. When people come together and each one takes their proper part and gives it the best, withholding nothing, there's a full manifestation of the body. And Yeshua is glorified to the extent that there's no limit to what he can release to the church. That's a challenge. That's why people, places like Arise Metropolitan Assembly, we say we are not a denomination. We can never be. We rejected it foundationally. The Lord said, I want to raise up a model, a laboratory where all the revelations I'm given through Global School of Music Masterclass, a laboratory where they are practiced in a, an environment where Holy Spirit takes charge and looks at it so that brothers and sisters in different nations of the world can come either by internet or physical visit to see that church is organism, a living, loving organism, not a dry religious corporation. Church is a place of grace where the Father releases His grace. And grace is multiplied as we serve one another. We serve each other with the grace in us. If I'm serving you with the grace in me, you shouldn't withhold the grace in you. If I'm releasing all the grace in me to serve you in apostolic teaching ministry, the question is, what has the Father given you to release towards me? And I'm using that allegorically to mean everybody who you are connected with, when you receive grace, it is required of you to also serve with grace. And when we walk this way, we can become the true church of Yeshua, the one that is getting ready for the rapture. Because the rapture is about the radiant, glorious Omega church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. And this is the way to make it happen. It's all by grace 
is all of grace. And by grace shall it be. You know what? We're going to pray right now. I want to encourage you. Listen to this. All through this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all of them, 10.20 a.m. London time, and Thursday, 7 p.m. London time, we are going to go into the Grace Nonagon and close up this chapter. All the videos are available on Through Kingdom Life, you know, uh, channel on YouTube. Go there and check it up. It, we understand lesson five has been given problem. A lecture is going to check, uh, you know, to see what is the issue so that we can make sure you can get all of it through Kingdom Life on YouTube. For instance, look at the grace. Tell me why we should have difficulty in going there and subscribe and help to boost that channel. Channel selling all manner of errors, all manner of lies are all over YouTube. Why can't we take our part? Go to YouTube, type through Kingdom Life. You see the one with the big ball, the whole world for the whole world. You subscribe and tell friends to subscribe so that together we can be instruments of making sure that there's a channel on YouTube where people can go and get trained all alone because that's the truth. That's what we're working on. And the teachings on Facebook like now, what is difficult for us to share? What is difficult? As many of us as are watching right now, this program, what is difficult for us to share to two or three or four or five people and share the video, let people hear the truth because legalism is coming to the body. Legalism is destroying marriages. People are legalistic. The legalism is destroying relationships. People are legalistic. Legalism is destroying many things in the household of faith. People started by faith and grace. They relapsed into legalism. And brothers and sisters, the Lord wants to recover grace as that which we came into the kingdom with. The Lord wants us to live by grace until that day when we breathe last. I want to thank the Lord for you. I want to pray for every one of us that we're going to walk in the fullness of grace. The Lord will unleash grace for us to be who he wants us to be, not what we want to be, not our ambition, but his vision shall be fulfilled. Shall we raise our hands to the Lord? Gracious Father in heaven, wherever your saints are, Lord, by your spirit, identify them right now. Begin to pour into their spirit, soul, and body the fullness of grace to transit from where they are to where they ought to be. Lord, I pray for an encounter with you, the Elohim of all grace. This week, oh Lord, as your people sit at your feet and learn, let grace open up. Let grace explode them. Let grace bring them to the place where they will be the fullness of your grace. When people see them, they will see virtue, your virtue, surround them, and there will be nothing of the flesh defining them again. Lord, let this impartation go forth right now. Let your people receive it right now. Let grace break yokes. Let grace bring healing. Let grace bring deliverance. Let grace shut down every portal of the enemy. All those ways through the enemy oppresses people by bad dreams and some familiar spirits. Lord, by the minister of the blood, we release grace for cut off familiar spirits from those people that they torment. Let your people walk in grace, O oh Lord, wrapped up in your grace and let your grace be the defining feature of your people that what they couldn't do ordinarily, grace will do it through them. And what you didn't give them grace for, let your people recognize that and drop it. Why should they die? Why should they fall before their time? Why should they be, oh Lord, stymied? Because they are doing what they don't have grace for. If it's a fivefold office you didn't give to them, give them the grace to drop it. Thank you for answering our prayer. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Before we go ahead, I just want to say this to you. Uh, if you are an intercessor, we have been training intercessors in asymmetric spiritual warfare. We've done 10 video trainings. And we want to say this to you. You can just go into the uh, Facebook group titled Global Prayer Tax Force to degrade and and eliminate coronavirus, join there, look at the photos button at the top, tap it, and it will open up, you see the videos there, take your training, those who finish 12 full training would give them a little test, 
if they go through, we're going to award them certificates, you know, of excellence in asymmetric spiritual warfare and prayers. And this is something we, we, we've seen the Lord release grace from the feedbacks we've got. And I want to say this to you, even as we are getting close to round up that one, we are going to start a training in pastoral care. You know, excellence in pastoral care. Pastor Grace and I are going to do the training and we're going to ask you if you are called to be a pastor or you have a pastorate or you have any of the fivefold offices really. I want you to just get ready. We're going to do it in the Global School of Ministry group on Facebook so that we can train you there every Saturday for excellence. And if at the end of training, you don't have the grace described there. You better do a spiritual audit to find that which you have grace for. So you don't hold an office and Satan is attacking you. The grace is not there and you are running on spent fuel of yourself. That is not the way to go. Thank you all so much. And elect, remember brothers and sisters, go to the website www.kingdombooksclub.com and download the book on grace and go to YouTube through Kingdom Life channel and subscribe to it and share this video. Help people to get to know the YouTube channel and you will have done very well. Shalom, grace, and peace to you.